TV2's Josh Bailey went to Kent State's meeting where they discussed the war going on in Ukraine and Russia. He has more on the events coming up. And President Biden held his State of the Union speech yesterday. We have a recap of everything he discussed later on. And Polish citizens are preparing to help Ukrainian citizens along their border. More on how they plan to help. And if you're a big fan of baseball, the news we have for you might be a little upsetting to hear. Stay with us to find out what that is. TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good evening, Portage County, and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Loudon. And I'm Erin Sullivan. TV2's Josh Bailey attended Kent State's meeting yesterday about the war in Russia and Ukraine. He has more about the events. Josh? That's right. The College of Arts and Sciences held a panel discussion yesterday to discuss the Russia and Ukraine conflict. Over 100 people attended the event, both in person and virtually. Members of the Kent community filled the room during yesterday's panel discussion focused on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This is an unprovoked war of choice. This is not a question of last resort. There was no imminent threat to Russia. There was no raging humanitarian crisis to stop. The events over the past week are not the outbreak of war. As Richard said, they are the continuation of an escalation of a war that has been ongoing since at least 2014. Six panelists shared the history between the two countries and explained motivations behind Russia's decision to invade Ukraine. It is, needless to say, in Putin's interest to burnish this aspect of Soviet history uh, when he makes his uh, grossly exaggerated claim that Ukraine is in any sense today a fascist state. Those in attendance, whether in person or virtually, had the opportunity to ask questions to the panelists. What can we do to support Ukrainian academics? Several students from Ukraine spoke out about the event. I lived in Ukraine for four years and worked in the media there. I reported on the, the war in the Donbass for every day for four years. Um, I'm glad that Kent State University is spreading information about it and especially about this recent escalation. What is happening right now in Ukraine is, I think, the most important and crucial moment in our history. And I believe that we will withstand and we will win. Others on campus hope another event like this one will be held in the future. I really appreciated the number of perspectives being offered here. I think one of the greatest strengths at Kent is our interdisciplinary power. I think the input of academics on how we should proceed, what expectations were broken, I think that'll be really important. Following the discussion last night, panel members say they will continue to monitor the events between Russia and Ukraine and are considering hosting another event in the future. Reporting for TVT News, I'm Joshua Bailey. Kent State's contract with Blackboard will be ending on June 30th of this year. Kent State will not have access to Blackboard after June 30th. All of Kent State's classes will be on Canvas, and the courses on Blackboard will not automatically migrate to Canvas. Students are advised to use the Blackboard retirement webpage to migrate content from Blackboard to Canvas if they wish to still have access to course content. And Kent State alumnus Earl Miller and his wife Marlene Wicherski have pledged $2 million to support research programs and students in Kent State's Brain Health Research Institute. The institute is recently established and focuses on understanding brain health across the lifespan. They use this knowledge to research the prevention and treatment of brain disease. The gift will help support the institute and help them to recruit and retain top leadership. And Kent is expected to decriminalize marijuana, but the university isn't quite on board. The sensible marijuana ordinance would decriminalize misdemeanor amounts of marijuana if passed on November 8th. The ordinance would remove fines, jail time, and court costs for marijuana under 200 grams. Marijuana and tobacco products will still not be permitted on Kent State's campus. And today is Ash Wednesday and it is the beginning of Lent. The Newman Center has been distributing ashes today and has a service later tonight beginning at 730. Ash Wednesday is a Catholic holiday and is a 40 day period leading up to Easter and involved intensification of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. And the Ravenna Board of Education is pushing for a project that will utilize district COVID relief funds to power the HVAC project. The project would instill air filtration systems into Ravenna schools. 
On Monday, the bid was rejected, but the school board is not giving up. If the project passes, it will be expected to be finished in the summertime. And an acrid man is facing charges after allegations that he broke into a Suffield home and tried to sexually assault a woman. 27-year-old Joshua Sayer has pled not guilty to charges on a grand jury indictment of aggravated burglary and kidnapping, both first-degree felonies. He is being held on a $75,000 bond. Sayer is scheduled for a jury trial on April 12th. Hello, Kent State and all of Portage County. I'm your weather anchor, Nuria Turtado, with your weather forecast. Let's see what we have for later today. Uh, currently in Kent, we have a 47 degrees, but if it's like 44, it's kind of chill. A uh, dew point of 32 degrees and a, and a wind breeze going east southeastern at 5 miles per hour with a humidity of 50% and visibility of 10 miles. Then we have at, se at 6 p.m., so right now we have a cloudy weather with 46 degrees. At midnight, we might think that we get rid of this winter weather, but we are going to have a mix of rain and snow with 37 degrees. And at 6 a.m., we're going to have mostly cloudy weather with 23 degrees, so it's going to get a little colder. That's all I have for now, but don't go anywhere because I have your seven-day forecast later in the show. Kent State running back has been arrested on murder charges. 55-year-old Eric Wilkerson was arrested Tuesday evening. Wilkerson allegedly stabbed 46-year-old Brian Weems in a Cleveland apartment. Police say the two men had an argument when things escalated. Wilkerson played for Kent State's football team from 1985 to 89 and was the leading rusher in the team's history. And the Ohio House has passed a bill that would get rid of permit requirements for Ohioans 21 and over to carry a firearm. Senate Bill 215 passed in a 57 to 35 vote. The bill would also allow gun owners to not tell law enforcement if they are carrying a firearm unless they are directly asked. And if the Ohio Senate passes this bill, it could be the end for concealed carry permits. After the first congressional map plan was rejected by the Ohio Supreme Court, Republican map makers have revealed a new plan on Tuesday. The plan outlines a map that would create 10 safe Republican seats with three Democratic districts and two toss-up districts that lean Democratic. Ohio is one of the last states to finalize its map of congressional districts and is losing a congressional seat due to its slow growth in population. If you missed President Biden's State of the Union address, don't worry. TV2 will have the breakdown and the highlights of the address. And the House has passed a new bill making lynching a federal crime. More on where the bill came from coming up.
We'd do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. Welcome back, everybody. Congress convened last night to hear Joe Biden address the nation on the state of affairs. TV2's Kyle Vassell joins us with a recap of the issues touched on in President Biden's speech. Hi, Kyle. That's right. Last night, President Joe Biden gave his first State of the Address to the State of the Union address. The first half of the address focused on the war in Europe. The president used the address to condemn Russian President Vladimir Putin over the war in Ukraine. He also rallied global support to help Ukraine in their time of need. The second half focused on reviving his stalled domestic policy agenda in Washington. President Biden also made a statement about the COVID-19 pandemic, asking to stop looking at COVID-19 as a dividing point. And quote, let's stop seeing each other as enemies and start seeing each other for who we are. A cancer that would put them in a flag draped coffin. I know. One of those, one of those soldiers is my son, Major Bo Biden. Colorado Representative Lauren Boebert interrupted President Biden during the State of the Union address. Last Tuesday night, the president was interrupted in the part of his speech when he was honoring the armed forces members who became ill to, to exposure to burn pits, which included his son, Bo Biden, who died of brain cancer in 2015. Boebert interrupted the president by yelling a reference to the 13 soldiers who were killed during the United States withdrawal from Afghanistan. For TV2 News reporting in Franklin Hall, I'm Kyle Vassell. We've seen videos of Russian forces moving exceptionally lethal weaponry into Ukraine, which has no place on the battlefield. That includes cluster munitions and vacuum bombs, which are banned under the Geneva Convention. Russian forces have been accused of using vacuum bombs that are widely banned and dangerous. The vacuum bombs are known to obliterate victims. Russia is accused of using them to attack a preschool in northeastern Ukraine. It has not yet been proven that Russia is using vacuum bombs, but if they were, it could potentially be a war crime. The bombs use a container of fuel and two separate explosive charges. And Polish citizens are scrambling to help Ukrainian refugees along the country's border. With thousands more expected to cross the border in the coming days, Poland is preparing for their arrival with nine reception tents. The tents will provide food, medical help, and information for refugees. Many ordinary citizens and business owners have volunteered to stock resources and be of assistance for the arriving Ukrainians. Welcome back, Portage County. I know you've been waiting for the rest of your weather forecast, so let's get into it. First of all, we have the live radar. Uh, as we can see, there is a, a little amount of, of clouds going around, but it's going to hit us around 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m., so take that in mind. And it's going to change accordingly through the night to be a mix of rain and snow. So it's going to affect all of northeast Ohio, and it's going towards PA2. Uh, so right now, on our, on our graphics, we have, um, on Northeast Ohio, we have uh, temperatures of 40s in Ashtabula and Cleveland. Sandusky has 48 degrees. Mansfield, Worcester, and Canton are in the lower 50s. And Ken and Youngstown have a 50 degrees too. Um, zooming to the seven day forecast, uh, as I said before, on Thursday we're gonna have a little bit cloudy with sunshine later and also on Friday. The temperatures are gonna start to rise during the, win during the weekend, so take that in mind. Uh, we're going to have mostly cloudy skies, but on Sunday, even though we're going to have higher temperatures, we're going to have rain showers and maybe thunder, so keep that in mind if you're going out on the weekend. Uh, on Monday, we have rain and showers, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have partly cloudy skies with temperatures on the 50s. That's all I have for you today. Enjoy that very sharpening weather, and I'll see you next Wednesday. The White House will be rolling out new details on the next phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Joe Biden rolled out some details of the plan in his State of Union speech, including allowing doctors to issue prescriptions on the spot for people that test positive. The new plan also includes a significant amount of money going to long COVID as well as bereavement to children that have lost their parents due to COVID-19. Kent State's Pandemic Leadership Committee is reviewing their COVID-19 protocols in a meeting sometime Thursday. The CDC has released a new statement regarding COVID-19 prevention. The university will release a statement with more information about possible future COVID-19 safety changes. And the House has passed a bill making lynching a federal crime. Lawmakers approved the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act in a 422-3 vote. The bill was named after Till, a 14-year-old black teenager that was abducted and shot in the head in 1955 after he allegedly whistled at a white woman in a store. A crime can be prosecuted as lynching when a conspiracy to commit a hate crime results in death or serious bodily injury. Perpetrators can face up to 30 years in prison. If you're waiting on baseball season, you might have to wait a little bit longer. The latest on the lockout. Hear from Kent State quarterback Dustin Crum on his experiences in the NFL Combine, coming up on My Sports Block. <laughs> Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. The clubs and our owners fully understand just how important it is to our millions of fans that we get the game on the field as soon as possible. To that end, we want a bargain and we want an agreement with the Players Association as quickly as possible. Yesterday, Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred announced that the first two series of the 2022 regular season have been canceled due to the ongoing MLB lockout. This means that the Cleveland Guardians, who were scheduled to open their season on March 31st at Progressive Field against the Kansas City Royals, will not open their season until April 8th at the earliest. The MLB and MLB Players Association are expected to meet in New York this week for negotiations with the hope of ending the lockout. Good evening, Portage County. My name is Liv Sharp, and I've got a recap of all things Kent Athletics, so let's get into it. The Kent State men's golf team finished the Coral Creek Invitational yesterday, tying with Texas A&M for 8th place. The flashes were led by Chris Van Det, who was recently named MAC Player of the Week, placing 28th and finishing six strokes over par. 
Josh and Jordan Gillickson finished 33rd and 37th respectively. The Flashes have a two-week break before they head down to South Carolina for the General Hackler Championship. We read to the hardwood. The Kent State men's basketball team took on Northern Illinois University last night and beat the Huskies 63 to 55. This extends their winning streak to 11, but hey, who's counting? The Flashes got off to a slow start, but really started to take off during the second half using their killer defense to close out the game. The Flashes were led by my man, Sensier Carey, finishing with 22 points and 6 assists. Malik Jacobs finished with 12 points and 9 rebounds. You have one more chance to watch this electric team on Friday in the MAC against Buffalo. Tip-off is at 6. The Kent State women's basketball team is headed out to Bowling Green for their last regular season road trip. The Flashes are coming off a tough loss against Mac opponent Buffalo on Saturday. Kent will rely on their Mac trio of Katie Shoemate, Nyla Blackford, and Lindsey Thal to rack up points against a high-scoring Falcons team. Tip-off is at 7 in the Stroh Center. On, uh, getting to meet a bunch of guys and watch them playing college football the last few years. Uh, just kind of soaking it in. Take it all in. I've really enjoyed it so far. Uh, I, th I think the interviews were big for me. I mean, obviously not uh, being as big a school guy, teams might not have known me uh, quite as well. So just getting a chance for them to get to know me uh, as a person and uh, as, a, as a football player, I think was big for me. Kent State quarterback Dustin Crum is taking part in the NFL Combine this week. The Combine is a way for NFL teams to watch prescriptions prospective players in action before the upcoming draft in April. Crum talked with the media today about his experiences in the combine and talking with NFL teams. Now from the NFL to the NBA, the Cavs are in Cleveland tonight facing LaMelo Ball and the Hornets. The Cavs are coming off a difficult loss against the Timberwolves on Monday, but the good news from that game is that the Cavs are finally starting to work cohesively without their rock star starters. Hopefully Darius Garland will be back in action tonight to help boost the Cavs to a great win. Tip off is at 7. That's all I've got for you tonight. As always, follow us at TV2KSU Sports for all updates on Kent Athletics. I'm Liv Sharp saying good night and go Flashes. A galactic collision caught on camera by NASA's Hubble Telescope. You won't want to miss this unusual instance when TV2 returns. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Brush, brushy, brush, brushy, brush, brush your teeth. Every day and every night. Brush, 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 brush. Now it's your parents' turn. Here's what you gotta do. Let uh, them have your toothbrush and I take your brushy brush your teeth. Peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Are you a fan of Harry Potter? Well, downtown Kent may have an event that is just for you. Wizardly Weekend will be taking place on Main Street on July 22nd and 23rd. That's right, and the group is working with businesses to develop a magically themed weekend featuring menu specials, window displays, wizardly treats, magical merchandise, and activities. Plans in the works are a 5 and 3 4th K fun run and bar crawl, painting project, vendor area, wand making station, and mini golf. Love. 
and in an amazing new deep space image captures a literal war of worlds between two colliding galaxies. NASA has released an image of the aftermath of a head-on collision of two galaxies. The image was captured by the Hubble Space Telescope and shows the unusual triangle shape of surrounding star formations. Wow. How do you feel about Harry Potter? Are you a fan? I feel like you either are a fan or you're not. So, so what are you? I'm a super fan, but like I'm, I'm lying when I say I'm a super fan because I didn't read any of the books, but I really fell in love with the movies. And fun fact, when I study, I listen to the Harry Potter soundtrack and I know all the instrumental by heart. I'll be like, mm-hmm. So will you be at the <laughs> event? If I'm here, yeah, for sure. I'll definitely go down there. I won't get emotional, though. I will say, fun fact. You will get emotional? I won't. I promise I won't. At every Why single... Why would you get emotional <laughs> at Wizard Louis? At weekend? every single Harry Potter movie, I have sobbed. Especially the first one, because Harry doesn't have parents, and he deserves parents. I'm not a Harry Potter girl, <laughs> so I have no clue what you're talking about. I'm just not into it. I just overrated so you're not gonna go to the wizard weekend no like i'm not a harry potter person like i <laughs> you will get you there i was as of last year i'll drag you along with no me. i've like tried and i'm just like this she is... said no to wand making no to wand making <laughs> yeah i don't need a wand it's a little bit too wizardly for me <laughs> but that about wraps up our wednesday newscast thanks for sticking with us tonight and for of course for all these stories and more go to kentwire.com and follow us on all social media i'm erin sullivan and i'm anna loudon have a great night portage county three months ago there weren't enough masks we were desperately sourcing from all over the world. People were making face coverings from scarves, bandanas, and bits of fabric. Now there are plenty of masks, but some people don't want to wear them. Come on. Mask up, America. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. I feel like, like her heartbeat is like the same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's there's room for me and mom when i'm holding her it makes me feel calmer it's a sensory thing it's a thing with asperger's she's really good with anya i've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns like she's from a different planet and this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like you know it's gonna be cool she's my superhero good job kitty cat when we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. And Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that.